Hey guys, welcome back to Intuitive Vibes. Erica here with another one. First and foremost, if you are new to the channel and you've managed to go through some of my content and you find it to be helpful, you find it to be informative, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe as I do update my content often. And of course, to all of my returning subscribers, welcome back. Now in this video, what I wanted to talk about was nine signs of an emotionally and psychologically manipulative person. Signs of manipulation in both sides from anybody in your life. So it doesn't have to be romance, it could be family, it could be friends, it can be anyone. Now, granted, there are about probably hundred, hundreds of signs of manipulation, but these nine in particular did stand out to me and I wanted to go over them with you. Now, given the fact that we are learning more and more about people who suffer from personality disorders, narcissism, you know, sociopaths, psychopaths, borderline personality disorder, I mean, the list goes on and on. A lot of the time, since we can't really diagnose who they are, what they are, what they're capable of, and so forth and so on, because we're not doctors, we at least need to determine and discern forms of manipulation that's utilized. We have to be sure that the kind of relationships we sustain with other people are the kind of relationships that are healthy, that are fit for our lives and pretty much just gives us peace. There's nothing wrong with that, right? You wanna have your peace and this is the best way to do it. So in learning about the different types of signs, you'll be able to discern better in regards to motives, intentions, whether people are you know purely genuine or they are abusing you they are manipulating you to gain self-gratification i mean manipulation is used in order to get something in return it's it's a tool that is used to deceive people in order to get a certain type of outcome and majority of the time it's covert it's you can't see it with the naked eye. So it's really important that we learn the different types of manipulation, the signs of manipulation, because if you're able to decipher these types of signs and you're able to see the patterns and the behaviors of someone who is manipulating you, then you can stop them at the punch. Without further ado, we're just gonna get into the signs. Now, the first one is they keep track of you. Now, if you're in a relationship with someone and you, a romantic relationship, and that other person wants to know of your whereabouts on an every day, any minute, every second basis, that is basically to keep control. Of course, that usually means the other, the underlying issues are trust issues. They wanna know where you're at, who you're with, what you're doing, when you're leaving, when you're going. These are forms of utilizing control because of, of course, insecurity and of course, lack of trust. Now, the other forms of keeping track of you can come from people who don't even like you, but they wanna keep on top of you and knowing what it is that's going on in your life to see how far you've come along. Now, these types of people may pretend to be your friend. They may pretend to be amicable with you. And in reality, all they're doing is they are keeping an eye on you and your progression. So let's just say you have an associate who you don't really talk to like that and you've always kind of had a bad vibe with them, but they do manage to contact you sporadically. That's just to see where you are. That's just to see what's going on in your life. And if you notice how they'll contact you and then they don't contact you again afterwards, it's because they already got the update. Another way of doing it is they'll cyber stalk you. They'll stalk your social media. They'll look at you know how you're progressing that way. So when it comes to forms of controlling a dynamic, no matter what that dynamic is, and keeping track of you, whether they're with you or not, whether they like you or don't, they just wanna see what you're doing. Now, what to do in situations like this is to be very careful, right? Make sure you set up proper and sturdy boundaries. Be careful who you allow into 
your world, into your life, into your business. And if you feel the need to not share anything with anyone, don't share it. You, It's your right. It's your prerogative. And if people take offense to it, especially when you are being respectful about your boundaries and you're basically setting the tone, then at least you know the kind of feedback that they give you. You can decipher, is this person really genuinely interested in seeing me succeed or are they just interested in seeing what I'm doing to, you know, think about what their next move is going to be? Because to a manipulator, it's all a game of chess and their main goal is to basically checkmate you. So just be careful with it. The next one is they befriend you when it's convenient for them. Now, I'm very familiar with people misjudging me, okay? Where people will give me a vibe that they don't really like me, they don't like anything about me, yet they don't know me. In some cases, I'm sure that's happened to all of us, they begin to like you after they've grown accustomed to you because they realize they misjudged you. Well, you have people who clearly just don't like you. There is no misjudgment going on. However, they will pretend to be your friend. They'll pretend to be cool with you. They'll pretend to have that good vibe with you only because you have something or you're doing something that will conveniently fulfill a certain need for them. So one minute they reject you, the next minute they're your friend. So you'll notice that they'll only come around when it's convenient for them or if they need something, if they need you to help them with something. They'll only contact you when it's something pertaining to what it is they need done or what it is they want. Otherwise, they don't know you. They're not bothering with you. They're rejecting you. And if you ever needed something done, oh, well, it's just an inconvenience because it just so happens to be a request that's done at a time that they can't do it. Or, you know, in this case, it's not that they can't do it. It's because they refuse to do it. So people like that will just basically be around when it's convenient for them. And then when it's not convenient, you don't hear from them. You don't know anything. And if you got something good going on in your life and they feel that they can benefit off of that, then that's when they want to start coming around all of a sudden. Now, what to do in this case varies with everyone. I'm not one to tell anyone what to do with it. But in my personal opinion, how I handle situations like that, I can't be around people who switch up on me. I can't be around someone who's one way one minute and then another way the next that just that right there you can't really trust someone like that because that's like I understand people have mood swings but under the regard of manipulation if you are hot one minute and then you're cold the next and then you want to be hot again because you need something from me no no I would strongly advise and I would strongly tell you guys that if you have people like that who switch up on you every so often and they try to do it subtly or they try to say, oh, you know, well, it wasn't like this. It wasn't. No, no, I would I would strongly say keep your distance, set those boundaries and don't back down from them. The next one is something that a lot of you are probably familiar with. They they'll text, email, instant message or even on social media with a lot of the the emojis, the emoticons and what they'll do is they'll say one thing. So it could be a heated discussion. It could be, you know, something that you're trying to take seriously. And what they will do is they'll basically undercut you with their comments. They'll undercut you with their messages. And at the end, they'll send you emojis like kissing face or winking or like, you know, they're basically getting what it is they truly want to say across so it can kind of poke at you and kind of mislead you but at the end you know they're putting something totally opposite of what it is that they're trying to or what it is they have gotten out to you so if for example they are making a statement and you're looking at the statement and you're like what the hell but then they end the statement with a kissing face or a little winking face that leaves you kind of confused because 
they want to control how you perceive them. So they want to, that's another form of abuse. That's covert abuse where they'll say something and then they'll end it with something that's totally opposite of what it is that they have intentionally said to you. It's like to say, okay, for example, um, if you put up a, a post and they say, well, you know, you, you're looking for attention. Oh my gosh, you're such an attention seeker. They really mean it. And then they'll put a winking face or a kissy face at the end. Now, what to do in this case? I mean, if you're familiar with it and you're familiar with, because we use emojis to express certain things. We use emojis to express a statement that we've made if it's positive, and we use them to express a statement we've made if it's negative. So you have to look beyond the emotional attempt of abuse. If someone is saying a relatively negative statement, but they're trying to end it with something that is positive, obviously that's totally opposite. But pay attention to the statement rather than the reaction. If it does not match, then chances are they're trying to get a rise out of you. And that's pretty much a way to play a game. Don't play the game with them. Just keep it moving. If you want to confront them, I mean, listen, do it in a respectable manner and clarify things. The next one is they smile and act positively with you, but you get a bad vibe with them. Now, in this situation, women are more guilty of doing this than men because men are more the logical ones and they don't really, you know, pick that much up when it comes to two-facedness, you can say. Two-facedness, two-facedness. <laughs> but, um, you know, women are more guilty of doing this because they act one way in your face, but then they'll do something else behind your back. If in your gut, you're getting that feeling of, this is kind of fake, you know, I feel like this is being forced. I really don't, I'm not, like the vibe is not there. Listen to your gut, because your gut is telling you something. And if you know you are genuinely a positive person and you try to get along with everyone, definitely listen to it. See, when it comes to men, men are pretty direct with one another. They're, they're, they're pretty direct when it comes to feelings at that point in time. Women, on the other hand, are a little bit more covert. And I mean, there may be some women who sit there and disagree with me, but, you know, admittedly, they are more co covert. They're the type to hmm, smile on your face and, you know, appease you. But the reality of it is, if you have someone who's not very genuine and they're just trying to make way, you know, into situations and you feel that it's forced, you feel that it's not genuine, it's not sincere. Your gut is telling you something. You can pick up vibes. You pick up vibes off of anyone. And unfortunately, that's just a common problem that women have amongst each other. What to do in this case? Well, if you feel that someone's not being 100 with you, that they may be trying to deceive you. You have to tread lightly. You have to tread lightly with them because if you're not too sure and you want to get the facts straight, you have to do your own form of investigation. You have to do your own form of basically ruling things out. You know, you have to pay attention to their behaviors. You have to pay attention to their body language. You have to pay attention to a lot of different things because you don't want to mistake someone who actually may be one way, but you're assuming that they're another. And in some cases, we also have to ask ourselves, you know, do I have subconsciously feeling, you know, subconscious feelings about this person that I'm thinking they're being or they're trying to be deceitful? The next one is... They'll loan you something or they'll put you in charge, but they'll micromanage. Let's say someone loaned you money and they are pretty much displaying behaviors of control, that they're not giving you any space or they're making it seem like you're in debt to them. That is a form of manipulation. 
So if they loan you something, it could be material possessions or it could be monetary, and they are giving you that, you know, I well, I gave you this, so technically you're in debt to me until you pay it back. They put you in charge, but yet they micromanage. They're giving you control, but yet they're not. They're pretty much just holding it over you. And I'm pretty sure people are familiar with, you know, if you borrow money from someone, some people want to be clear on what it is you're using it for. And they want to kind of monitor how you're using it. Or if you borrow money from someone and they say, well, you know, pay me back whenever. Don't worry about it. Pay me back whenever. And you are under that agreement. You know that you owe them. You know you're going to pay them back. But you end up buying something, let's say, with your own money. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant. It could be anything, you know, and you buy something and they notice that you bought something with your own money. Mind you, they told you, you can pay them back anytime. So you still have intention to pay, but they're looking at you like, well, you went and bought that, but yet you still haven't paid me back, but you told me I could pay you back whenever. They put you in charge, yet they're still micromanaging. They're still controlling it. Now, what to do in this situation? Well, first thing you got to consider is the reason why they're like that. You know, I mean, uh, if they have their reasons, you can sit down amicably and talk about it. You loaned me this. I have intention on giving it back to you. But why are you acting this way? I mean, if they have reasons, you know, that they've loaned things out before and they didn't get it back and I mean, in most cases, if that's the case, if you feel really to the point that you don't trust loaning things to people, then maybe you shouldn't be loaning things to people. But if you do loan something to someone, you're loaning it to them with the trust that they're going to give it back to you. So if people are like that, I mean, the, the easiest solution to it is, is just don't loan anything out to people. And if, you know, they act like that with you after loaning you the money, and sit and have a talk with them. Now, the next one is you're being monitored like a child. Now, listen, we, we as caring, loving people, you know, we want to make sure that the people we care about are, you know, in places where they're safe and you tell them, let me know when you get home. So I know you got home. Okay. Um, where are you going to be tonight? So I at least know in case anything happens, that's genuine caring you know you're caring about someone you're caring about someone's whereabouts you're caring about their well-being and their safety but being monitored like a child is constantly knowing who what where when why how and it's just that control and it can make someone feel like humiliated and demeaned and in some cases suffocated to the point where the person doesn't want to have that communication and obviously, this doesn't only just apply with romantic relationships, though I know people are familiar with that. This can go with familial relationships. It could be your parents. It could be people that you are living with. It can be people that feel that they have a, you know, they have something over you. A lot of the time, people who try to maintain control, it, it's, it's because they don't want to lose control. They have underlying issues. They have underlying trust issues. They have underlying insecurities. And the best way to deal with it for them is being in the driver's seat, is being the one who can say what goes, how it goes, when, so forth and so on. So it can be, it can be pre rather demeaning, especially if you're someone who's old enough to make your own decisions and you're an independent individual. Now, what to do in this situation? The, the best thing to do is communicate. Communicate how it makes you feel, but do so in a calm manner. Don't talk in a aggressive, angry, frustrated manner, even though those are the feelings that you're feeling because the other individual is making you feel that way, but sit and talk with them. And if the behaviors are consistent if the behaviors continue after you've made it clear how it makes you feel now 
you have to decide if you want to continue in entertaining the relationship or if you want to just go your own way. And again, it could be with anybody, romance, friends, or family. If they're going to continue to try to control you and everything that you do with any kind of leverage, it might be time to walk. Now, the next one is you're micromanaged or you're given an identity. And to be micromanaged basically means that the person who's trying to micromanage you is under the impression that you're incapable of doing things. You're incapable of handling responsibilities. You're incapable of succeeding or proceeding without the help of them. A lot of people tend to do this, whether it's in romantic relationships and familiar relationships, family members. They tend to give the impression that you're incapable of managing your own life without them being a part of it, without them being there. You're incapable of doing things that would maybe require a lot of work or require your elevation in life without their help or their input. And the reality of it is, is that they're speaking from an anxiety, fear-based consciousness they want to have control a manipulator's point is to have control so they will do the things that whether consciously or subconsciously all right i'm gonna put that in there for the benefit of the doubt they will do things to make you think that you need them that you need them in your life where would you be if they weren't there how would you succeed if they weren't a part of it? How would you have the things that you have if it weren't for them? They will basically try to force their opinions, their thoughts, their ways of thinking onto you so that way you can look at it like you need them. Now, what to do in this situation? Well, like I said, communicate. Communication is the key. That's that's closed mouths don't get fed. You have to communicate with them. I don't appreciate you micromanaging me. I don't appreciate you trying to control the aspects of my life and what it is that I'm trying to do. And I don't appreciate you making it seem as if I don't know what I'm doing, that I'm incapable of doing it. And I need you every step of the way to do it. There are ways to get around communicating with someone like that and not have to be upset and angry and fighting and have a toxic blowout you know and in some cases once the micromanagers see that you are capable of doing things that you are in control you have full control of what it is you want to do in some cases they'll back off so if it works great and the next one is you are bombarded with expectations rules desires by the person who's trying to control, by the manipulator. You are basically, every encounter you have with the individual or individuals is a negative one. It feels like a job. Everything negative, and remember when they, a lot of manipulators walk in their own negativity. They walk in their own despair. And you know, when you come in contact with them, that gets projected onto you. So everything that they've expected, everything, every outcome they've wanted to happen, whatever the case may be, that gets projected onto you because when it happens, when situations happen in a negative aspect for them and you can have nothing to do with it, they project it on to you creating that toxic dynamic. It just pretty much gets to a point where every encounter you have with the individual or individuals becomes a negative one. And we'll use an example. Let's say you're out shopping and you're just doing your thing and the person or the people happen to see you shopping. Now, naturally, anyone would think someone that you know, someone you're involved with or someone that, you know, if you're a family member, they'll walk over to you and they will greet you. Hi, how are you? What's going on? And have a conversation with you. Someone who is emotionally and psychologically manipulative will be judgmental, aggressive, and just basically come at you. 
it's always negative because they want to have control. They want to know what you're doing. What are you doing out there? What, why are you shopping? It's just a, a bunch of questions, which leaves you confused. Like, what the hell did I do? You know, but what to do in this situation? Don't add fuel to the fire. Just don't. Especially if they're coming at you in a very judgmental and negative tone and a very just agitated demeanor. Cool off. Just, you know, just just go your way and, and just let them know, listen, I can't talk to you while you're like this. Because what's going to happen is, is that if you entertain it, it's going to, it's going to blow up. It's going to create a, a really, really big blowout and it can lead to something way worse. So... If you just, you know, calmly let them know when I'm cooled off and you're cooled off, then we'll sit down and talk. Avoid contact with them, especially when they're in that state of mind, because nothing good comes out of it. Nothing positive comes out of it. And lastly, religious, moral and ethical standards are used to guilt trip you right now. If you believe in God. You know that God does not use manipulation or deception to guilt trip people. In fact, he gives us free will where we have a choice. We can follow him or we cannot. People tend to use religion as a way to try to control other people. They try to instill fear, guilt, shame, all of the things that are opposite of God. God does not instill these things within us, but people will do that because in order to have control over you, they have to try to guilt trip you. They have to try to basically point out to you shameful things about yourself in order to make you feel really low and feel guilty about it. And that is, that's the work of evil because evil has to manipulate. Good doesn't. Plain and simple. They will utilize religious order, religious factors. They will utilize God's word to manipulate people. And that is the total opposite of what God is about. Now, if you are someone who is very devoted to your religion and you make it a clear factor, the reasons why you cannot interact with people who delve into other things that are not of God, that's different because you're respecting your religious beliefs. And this part of the signs really stands out to me because I do notice that people do that. A lot of people do that. A lot of people try to put fear into other people. Well, if you don't do A, B, and C, then God is going to be, you know, this way with you and that way with you. Listen, you do what it is you do. God gave you free will. Your choices, your consequences, your, you know, whatever it is you feel about yourself. If you feel some kind of way, if you feel that you've done shameful things, that's for you to deal with. Nobody can pass judgment on you. People tend to throw stones at glass houses. And meantime, they live in one themselves. So a lot of the time, manipulative people will utilize religion, no matter what the belief is. Because even in a cult, they will utilize it to manipulate people. Remember that. What to do in this situation? Like I said, if you have a conscience, whether it's guilty or not, you have to deal with it in a way that you know how. If you feel that you were wrong about certain things in your life, if you feel that you were deceptive in your own ways, whatever the case may be, whatever the issue is, that is for you to decide how you want to handle it. Do not let people guilt trip you into thinking or believing that if you do not do things a certain way or do things a way they say you should do it, that you're wrong and you, you know, you, you're going to go to hell for it. Like, no, don't, don't, don't do that. Just work on yourself, work on your conscious, work on your guilty conscious, work on your self-conscious, just work on everything within yourself and you'll figure out the answers on your own. 
what I've learned is that manipulation has been used from many people, all right? And there were no exceptions to the rules when it comes to it. Depending on the outcome that it is that you want, and the reason I say that is because you have narcissists who manipulates from a fear, anxiety-based conscience because they want to get that self-gratification. They want to do it for their personal needs, their personal desires. Codependents, on the other hand, also use manipulation, but they use it because they have no sense of love, self-love. And they have been trained to believe that the love is conditional and all they really want is to feel love. Are both methods right? No. Are both methods fear-based and from trauma? Yes. Are both methods really necessary? No. Do they need to work on themselves? Absolutely. But we have to remember the difference between the two because you have one who does it for their selfish desires rather than getting the help that they need. And we have one who does it because they did not get that kind of love, just like a narcissist, but they didn't get the kind of love and they just crave it. And subconsciously, they are manipulating because they're trying to basically get something which is a feeling of validation. Narcissists and codependents are so similar in their trauma and they're so similar in their actions, but one does it in being extremely avoidant and not caring who they hurt as long as their ego is getting fulfilled. And the other does it because they are just craving emotions and attention and affection because they did not get it. They're both from the same spectrum, but they both internalize their trauma differently, okay? One is unempathetic. The other one has too much empathy, which is why people consider them to be overly emotional and overly sensitive. So we just got to remember the difference of the two. But regardless of it, they both need to come to terms with their issues and they both need to get the proper help. So that way they can begin having healthier lifestyles and they can begin having healthier relationships. Well, guys, these are nine signs of some of the signs of a psychologically and emotionally manipulative person. There are a lot more signs. There are a lot more things that people need to look for. And listen, we're in quarantine. So if you have time, do your research. If you have time, study it. Because when all this is said and done, we gotta go back out there into the outside world. And we gotta go back out there and re-socialize and reconnect with people, and at least we can come out of this quarantine more educated, smarter, and more discerning. That's the important thing. It's a cold world out there. It really, really is, and it's sad, but it's the truth. And the best way to get through a cold world is to stay warm. And the best way to stay warm, work on this. And of course, work on this. All right. So guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions, if you'd like to leave any feedback, please be sure to leave me a comment in the comments section. I always look forward to any kind of feedback and I love interacting with my viewers as well as my subscribers. So hope you all are staying safe. I hope everyone is doing well and hopefully we only have a little bit more to go until we can actually try to become normal again in in this whole entire crisis we may not be normal but who knows maybe when we leave all of this and we we go back out there we'll see things in a totally different perspective and hopefully in a more positive manner so guys i wish you all the best until next time namaste